Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be the closing match between Bug and Kiko. Upper left-hand corner, we got Bug starting as the Midnight Blue Protoss. Bottom left-hand corner, we got Kiko starting as the Red Terran. This is going to be on Citadel, the huge map that it is. I really like this one for some reason, and both these guys are capable of some... This is going to be an interesting play, honestly, and I'm hoping we see like a 14 Command Center and 12 Nexus play in the midst of this, because I could see both players pulling that sort of stuff off. This is such a gigantic map. Uh, I don't feel like the, and it's kind of interesting because it's gigantic. You have this mineral field that is somewhat exposed, so it kind of makes more sense to instead grab the six o'clock, uh, which has a full 5,000 gas, or maybe start expanding to other expansions right here. And so it becomes an interesting map, in my opinion, of territorial control in wide open fields and macro aggression. And we've seen that both of these guys are capable of some amazing macro aggression. Bug likes sneaking next eye where he can and has some Nexus, I think is actually the plural. Someone had that a long time ago. There's your bit of trivia for this match. And Kiko can easily establish a nice solid line across three, ba uh, three bases, get to 3-2 and play a long macro game. And I think that's Kiko's preferred style, most comfortable style. Actually, I actually like Kiko's play in general because if you feel like Kiko's got a good balance between a uh, pretty aggressive... A very good balance between fairly aggressive openers, aggressive postures, and then also like two factory, one factory pushes, things like that, but also long, more, more macro oriented games. Bug scouting top right first. Looks like this is going to be a gateway assimilator rather than a 12th Nexus. We are seeing a gas cap from Kiko, so neither player opting to go for, despite it being a very large map, <coughs> neither player opting to go for more of the early economic play. I wouldn't, I could see Kiko adjusting out of this and still just going one Marine into expansion and then factory potentially. It's not this typical build order though that you'll see out of Terrans. And so I think this is still, just because we are getting that gas up, I think it is more likely still going to be, yeah, factory. Cause there's not a lot of reason to start getting gas if you're not going factory first. Anyway, seven so X core dropped in the background. So with this opener, I'm wondering if Bug is thinking... So I, I'm wondering if this is the line of thought that's going both directions. This is such a wide open map that getting vultures on it can be absolutely frustrating. You can just see like the huge amount of territory to drop mines and getting mines across this area. There's just a lot of territorial control you can get with maybe early vulture play. So maybe the thinking the opposite end is, is let's get a lot of dragoons out. Yeah, for, so first out skipped. Let's get a lot of dragoons out early, get that range up early. So we can seal our opponent in and maybe get a soft contain to mitigate that vulture threat in the early game. It looks like Kiko going for the very safe thus far, three, probably three Marines vulture to secure the natural expansion. Bug has been scouted and it looks like it is going to be one gate Dragoon into expansion this time for real rather than for uh, fake seas. Kiko does want to wander back out and confirm that that Nexus actually drops as that Dragoon. So did see it on that corner because there was still a missing third pylon although everything indicated that that was going to be sometimes what protoss players will do those sneaky sneaky snakes is they'll drop a probe right here as though they're going for that expansion when there's already a third pylon somewhere out in the map building constructing quietly silently viciously and we do know that there's we do know that that's a possibility given bugs play vulture produced command center and we have the uh, marines out in the front we're probably going to see a bunker just in case. I, honestly, I do feel like this is where Kiko could cut a corner here is by skipping that early bunker just because of the distance on the map, but it looks like that bunker going to get constructed no, uh, nevertheless. Especially knowing that it was a Nexus first, but anyway. Dragoon going to hunt down that SCV, wipe it out. The Vulture pressing forward is going to run into a Dragoon along that edge, but going to be able to get underneath, spot the robotics, spot the Nexus, and actually might even get a probe kill. Because, uh, well, never mind. It's going to turn around, make its way towards the right. Looks like Kiko wants to save it rather than sacrifice it for the scouting information to get those three mines up. We do have mines researching another vulture rather than a siege tank being built. And actually, mm, not sure I like that now. Knowing that it was Nexus uh, Gateway and range along the side, uh, that means there's going to be a good amount... Well. We'll see how this plays out. Range is going to be a little bit delayed. We're going to have the vulture... So we got... A Vulture and an SCV out on the front already. We'll see if that Vulture is able to kind of 
stream by. Ranger's going to finish, and it's going to be a while before there's a siege tank out, which means that Bunker is going to be under a lot of harassment. But there is a world where this Vulture gets repaired, sneaks back out, drops some mines behind the corner, or is able to, or could have pressed. But it looks like Kiko, or sorry, Bug is going to go ahead and drop the gap here, put a Dragoon to go ahead and defend. And we are seeing, so yeah, we are seeing a lot of Vulture being constructed. That first siege tank out with the threat. Mm, some mines out in Ford Field that should be taken care of. We have also behind this observatory, robotic support bay, uh, some of that good, solid, juicy tech. SAV trailing out towards the upper right. We could, uh, honestly, a proxy uh, Stargate could be really interesting here as well. Range not yet complete. One thing with going that Nexus first, it does delay this. That Siege Tank can a lot of hits, though. Range now finished, but enough damage, honestly, on these Dragoons. And with just two of them, I don't know that it's really worthwhile to poke forward on that bunker. And we still have that single Vulture that's out in the field. So, and the SEV critically able to discover a probe and a Dragoon at the 12 o'clock. Which lets Kiko know, okay, this is going to be a quick three bases. And we also have a lack of observers in between. Oh, nice walk back. Got him. Oh, got him. Nice play. And Kiko, this is what I talked about, where Kiko has some... And nice engagement there by Kiko, holding the vision high ground. So the Dragoon's getting some misfire, and also microwing that siege tank around. And now that Dragoon might, like, honestly, might has wasted a lot of its shields, and Kiko able to press through. And we don't have a lot of... I don't see any other defense. So that 12 o'clock base might get taken out very, very rapidly. A single Dragoon... Again, hitting a mine. Oh, man. Everything working out in Kiko's favor right here. All the units swarming. A couple mines planted here, and this is going to be a box out. But is Kiko going to go for the natural expand? Here's the thing. If Kiko wanted to, yeah, I can just set up here at the natural. I think the better play might be doing this, setting up, yeah, creating a little bit of contain. And now that vulture making its way to the 12 o'clock. Thing is, is this vulture is not going to... It's very, very slow for a vulture to be able to take that out. And we do have a dropship up, but again, bug a little bit light on troops to defend this. So I think Kiko recognizes, okay, it's going to take forever for this vulture to kill this next to the 12 o'clock. The Nexus is in fact finishing, so let me pull all the units up here, hold this gap, wipe this out, and play from here. The one saving grace from bug is he does have that shuttle, uh, that shuttle up to maybe ferry some troops in, but there are going to be Marines. If the Marines move to that edge they could, and focus fire, there could be a lot of disruption. At one advantage for Bugsy, at least sees the units between point A and point B. Siege Shank looks like they're on a, a bad rally. So never mind. Bug recognizing overplayed my hand and just hit too many mines in between. So Kiko able to wipe out that 12 o'clock. Now just needs to make it all the way back to the main before there's the counter damage with that Reaver. We have four factories up very, very rapidly. Five factories, I presume, for Kiko. So Kiko definitely wanting to play it aggressive as far as the follow-up. No additional machine shop, so I think this is going to be mostly, and plus one weapons just finishing, I think this is mostly to get a flurry of vultures out in the field, again, because it's just massive territory and a lot of vulture harassment. One problem for Kiko, though, is we got, what, three, well, three siege tanks might be sufficient to deal with this as far as the follow-up. Marines got wiped out. Looks like a closer three o'clock base getting grabbed. There's still two siege tanks at the 12 to go ahead and deny that base. But this is looking like a much more fragile defense. I think it was just a single Marine that got wiped out there. We got two Marines, two Siege Tanks, and that could easily be cracked open by some nice micro with that shuttle in that Dragoon. The Vulture also kind of checking out that upper right. So Kiko able to score some damage. Again, in a great position now in the mid game. So even on supply. Really solid economy. Dragoons getting plopped out. Looks like the eggs are being opened up already for Kiko. I think this is to get... So now we see that second machine shop. I think this is to get that flood of vultures out mid-map. Does the shuttle... Sh I think the shuttle shows itself. <clears throat> and Kiko gonna mirror it. So shadow it. Drop some mines and chase it down. Do we have a... I don't think we have a Goliath alongside to really create all that much of a threat. The Observer checking out that 12 o'clock location situation. So supplies in Kiko's favor. Upgrades in Kiko's favor. And Kiko... I think Kiko, despite going for the... Well, we'll see how this plays out. Kiko could just pull the trigger and go with the five factories into his opponent. I have a feeling this is going to turn more into, uh, again, three three base play towards the 3-2. That's more Kiko's MO. 
Just saying that's open. Kiko, it, it bugs in a very precarious position where just that mineral only is open. This is a very delayed third. Finally moving up to that 12 o'clock to clear everything out with some Reavers, it looks like. The Reaver is going to drop on opposite siege tanks. Do the Marines get a Reaver kill, though? If they focus fire, maybe? Try to attack that shuttle. Might barely miss that Reaver. Six o'clock base, the Dragoon has been evicted, and that's going to be another base for Kiko. It's kind of what was expected. So sub even even supply, I don't know that Bug's going to catch up, honestly, because how many, what do we got? We got six gateways behind this. Six gateways behind this. So six gateways versus five factories. And uh, the small mercy here is, is that Kiko hasn't been aggressive with the vultures in the interim and swept across the map yet and planted a huge amount of mines somewhere out in the field. We do have just that one latent vulture top right, but Dragoon's now moving forward for Bug. Bug looking for maybe an engagement. I think we got a sufficient amount of siege tanks plus that weapons upgrade. Providing a little bit of threat. That shuttle gets taken out. Huge. Nothing working out for Bug this match. Loses two Reavers lightly to the Goliaths with the range upgrade. And now the Vulture's starting to stream out. This is this is going to be the big problem for Bug. Is just look how big, look how big the area on this map is, and how hard it is to track these Vultures. This is, I think, oftentimes where I'll see Protoss players that um, at a high level, what they'll do is is they'll really prioritize getting observers out the map, and make sure they have vision absolutely everywhere. So and then have pockets of dragoons to try to keep the the Vulture count a little bit lighter. Looks like Bug able to clear out the worker top right, but this is usually you want this before that command center is up, and that command center is already up, and that gas is about to get capped. Never mind, it's going to be a double expand for Bug, is what's happening here. So Bug just hoping that Kiko is going to sit back and not apply aggression while down 10 supply. And I don't, and we got another drop chip out, so it looks like Kiko going to go for a drop play potentially once again. That's a very, so it could very much create some problems at the 12 o'clock location. We do have some Dragoons on the ground. We don't have a pylon block top right. Not a lot of defenses at the natural. And the main, I don't know if that, well, it's still a target for a while, but I don't know that Kiko is going to bite down on that target. So two Siege Shanks moving out, a couple Vultures sweeping around, checking out the territory. Not a lot of mines out in the field right this second. I am surprised we haven't seen a factory surge as of yet from Kiko, considering the like the time that, th that third base has been up, it looks like more concentrating on the dropship to make stuff happen. Some vultures on the exterior of that 12 o'clock base waiting for the probes to make their way this direction. And man, they're just lying in wait. Are they going to find it though? Yeah, going to be able to sail in, get some free kills, and the siege tanks are going to be able to... And so that's drawing these dragoons out of position. And so the tanks look like they're going to siege... At the forward position here, be, might even get a Nexus kill in the midst of this. The Vultures actually might be able, with considering how light Bug is on troops right now, the two Siege Tanks with a little bit of Vulture help might be able to clear that out. And honestly, these Dragoons, two of them are heavily damaged. I don't know that five Dragoons is going to be sufficient to deal with two Siege Tanks, depending on how this, how this goes. Although I don't see Vulture support moving up, so kind of donated troops now. Yeah, they're just going to walk straight in. So one Dragoon dies. They also were able to go in between an attack. A little bit of a troop donation there from Kiko. But was able to kill some probes there at the 12 o'clock. Slightly behind on workers. I don't think it matters though. Because up 20 supply plus 2 weapons plus 2 armor. Just about in place. And we have more drops potentially making their way in. And also some workers as they're trying to make their way across getting wiped out. Comps adding just to make sure the coast is clear. These Dragoons... More problems for Bug walking into these minefields. Yeah, bye. So now it's, we got five fresh dragoons trying to make their way out. Some photon cannons getting dropped right as the drops there from Kiko. Unfortunately, mines do not attack buildings. And I'm wondering if the splash actually is going to work out. But probes are going to get cleared out here. That's going to delay the dragoons a little bit. It's too bad. Oof, some nice mine hits right there. Is this going to be get cleared actually? If this tank on sieges, they might be able to... Looks like not. So just a couple cannons getting wiped out once again. I feel like Kiko would get more value out of these drops 
if he could uh, sneak across to that 12 o'clock location. Looks like he does have another drop potentially staged up and has created a degree of frustration. A probe trying to sneak in to go ahead and grab that top right. But Bug trying to grab that and the 9 o'clock. So just hoping that Kiko's going to sit back, not grab a lot of bases. Kiko is grabbing bottom right in the meantime. <laughs> just unloading the dropship. Leaving these two vultures right here. A little bit of tack on the cannons. We do have some cannons, it looks like, at the 12 o'clock and a gateway. Interior and a Dark Templar. To deal with that 12 o'clock. Are the vultures going to... So they are going to land. They're still going to get some kills. But without support, not going to get as much as they might otherwise. So cleaned up pretty easily. Now we're starting to see some better vision from Bug. You can see the Observer going to find bottom right. But he's gone very, very... Very, very macro aggressive here. Still trying to take top right. Vulture still creating some harassment right there. But we got the double forge. How are we looking at gateways? We got a whole bunch of gateways surging in. It looks like it's going to be a fleet beacon stargate swap attempt. That m I think that might have gotten comms added from Kiko. And honestly, that was kind of... That was a very greedy play from Bug regardless. Because Bug trying to go... So he's sending Zealot's bottom right. Vultures, we'll see if they can clean them up. The command center can just float, and that should be uh, sufficient defense. But with the Zealot's bottom right down on supply, Kiko at max supply, with 2-2 two, two upgrades, he could pick a target and move towards it, and I don't know that Bug has enough to stop him, because we don't have, with the Stargate, with the attempt to move to Carrier, we don't have High Templar, we do not have the Arbiter with Stasis. One problem for Terran dealing with this sort of situation where you have a Protoss that have all sorts of bases to work with and might be able to do a macro swing is over dedicating troops to a single location. So you only need like a siege tank and a vulture here to take care of that nine o'clock while the rest just sweep into the natural and see if Kiko baits down and dedicates too few troops or is able to get in here. It looks like all the troops moving to the natural. Defense matrix on the front. So they're gonna ignore the nine o'clock that's unsaturated right this second, which is probably the right call. And now Bug has massive problems. Look at the siege tank wall. The Dragoons walking into it. The Vultures have been cleared out, but that's a very fast resupply. And the Dragoons... Level... Actually, decent upgrades. Level 2 armor, level 2 weapons because of those, forge, those forges that have been spending the entire time. But Kiko, with the Vultures, very quickly going to be able to resupply and reposition. And we don't have... We got one gateway at the 12 o'clock. We don't have a lot of gateways out to provide support otherwise. And so now, it is, yeah, you got this great economy, but how are you going to get your troops out? Situation. 9 o'clock base, a little bit fallow as well. So Bug, now down 40 supply, and really needed a massive supply lead, particularly without a lot of tech advantage. Maybe the carriers are able to sweep the tide here. That is a possibility here. And we're not seeing a lot of Goliaths out in the field, so I'm not sure if Kiko recognized the tech switch. They're what five goliaths down here and that's usually just to deal with potential shuttles so the quite so potentially the question is is when does kiko discover the carriers do the carriers end up out in time to deal with the siege tanks and how much does bug lose to all these siege tanks in the meantime so natural expansion has gone but 12 o'clock base is up everything in the top right is under bugs control so it is possible that a combination of Dark Templar and Carriers that are uncontested sweep these Siege Tanks and keep Bug in the match. But right now, Kiko in firm control. It looks like the 9 o'clock base has been spotted. A Goliath wiping that out there. Plus three weapons across the board, by the way. And it looks like Cloak being upgraded as well and two uh, Starports being dropped to deal. So I think the Carrier, the potential Carrier victory condition is being collapsed on by Kiko. So recognizing that there's a lot of economy to work with, the carriers have managed to sweep their way out, but wants to Kiko wants to make sure that it's not going to be okay and air battle wins everything. Single Goliath still chewing away at that. Kiko repositioning towards the 12 o'clock, finds carriers there. Some Goliaths moving up to intercept. Also Dark Templar underneath, going to be able to clear a lot of that out. And Kiko holding with a lot of this attack force. So wiped out the third, wiped out the natural expansion, has got a lot of territory being grabbed, so bottom right not yet saturated. The main is my here's the other problem for Kiko. Main's mind out, natural expansion somewhat thin, has additional bases, but needs to get them saturated really quick to keep up that economic supply. In the meantime, Bugs economy absolutely flattened. 
158 supply. It's a lot of supply to work with. We're going to have a comp set to deal with this. 9 o'clock base. A command center being built at the 9 o'clock. Carriers and Dark Templar are able to clear out. Kiko donating a lot of troops, however. Between, uh, to the carriers and the... I'm wondering if that... I don't think this is tactical, but it might have been to just pro provide some delay to keep these siege tanks in position in the meantime. Maybe build that uh, wraith count. Wraiths are being produced and Dark Templar are finding mines in the meantime. Not a lot of Goliaths there. A secondary attack force from Kiko moving mid-map. So leaving the siege tanks here. That's occupying the carriers. And while these are being wiped out, Kiko restaging and just going to send everything else underneath the top right. Able to wipe out the single Dark Templar that was in a defense situation. So now Bug has the problem where he might have an answer to a handful of these siege tanks. But he can't be everywhere at once with this carrier force. And Kiko is absolutely everywhere. The Dark Templar getting cleaned up. Some nice commsats by Kiko to wipe that out. And so now losing what tech there was. And things are looking like it is. It looks like it's becoming a solid Kiko victory more and more. Respect the bug for fighting it out here at this stage. Hell of a final game, I gotta say. Siege tanks and vultures pushing in. We got a, the troops, now that the siege tanks are out, are open to evacuate. But Bug doesn't have a lot of latent minerals here to produce a sufficient army. And there's a lot of mines in between. Let's, I'm not sure the observers are going to stage back to deal with this. So he's actually going for an offensive, maybe. Wants to wipe out potentially bottom right. There is a lot of siege tanks in between. And some vultures. Oh, man, an entire army that just reinforced. Worst possible timing for Bug here. So the carrier is able to clean up some defense top right. So that looks like it's going to get established. But his counterattack army getting obliterated. Kiko maintaining the supply lead. And I'm waiting. There's a growing wraith fleet somewhere around here. Right there, staging forward. And as soon as these wraith are in sufficient numbers, this carrier fleet is not going to be long for life. Wraith peel back carriers pretty rapidly, particularly without observer support. So bottom right is up. But not yet mining for Kiko. He's got a massive bank, however, so doesn't really need to worry about it. Looks like the workers are going to be able to flee back out. Some vultures are slightly in the way. Some Goliaths in the way as well. So they're going to take some hits as they're trying to escape. But now we got all sorts of Goliaths up here. One carrier down, two carrier down. The third one's going to, the remainder are going to get EMP'd. And I'm waiting for the Wraith to start joining the battle, because that will basically be it. Probes have made it top right. That base is going to be oversaturated. And it's basically a cleanup operation for a victory now for Kiko. I think it'll be GG as soon as those Wraith uh, press out. That that should be basically it. One problem for Kiko is maybe you don't want to overcommit with the Wraith and have too few siege tanks under in the meantime. More reinforcements making the way top right. Looks like this small attack force is going to get cleared up. Upper left. The Wraith looks like... This is still... Yeah, it's already a full control group, so I'm wondering what the delay on the Wraith is at this stage. Kiko still denying that natural expansion top right. The 12 o'clock has been mining this entire time impressively. So bug fighting admirably, I have to say, but at a 60 supply deficit... Kiko just needs to saturate everything else, and that should be game. One problem for Kiko, not the best saturation. We got some fallow, well, maybe actually better. Never mind, looks like the bases have gotten saturated out there. <clears throat> More probes trying to make their way across to get to... Hoping the promised land is here. And the Goliaths pushing back. 174 supply for Kiko. I think Kiko just kind of pulling back, taking stock. Of the situation. A couple mind drags actually clearing out his sea shanks, so his mind's working against him briefly here. And I think this is just he wants the flourish finish here, which is the Wraith pressing forward and wiping out all the probe lines and taking out everything at the end. Wants to go into the round of four with style, is I think what uh, the finale is at this stage. And unfortunately, Zealots, as they're marching out, do not attack the air. A lot of sea shanks. Well, some siege tanks bottom right. There are enough Goliaths and other Cruft that'll be able to clear it out. The Wraith moving forward. The Zelts fighting some, yeah, opposition. Single carrier 
right there, I'm going to immediately explode. And uh, that is going to leave a lot of bases open to those Wraith. Are these Zelts going to be able to get bottom right? That would be kind of hilarious, honestly, if these Zelts... Yeah, they, it looks like they might be able... Kiko might have overproduced with the Wraith. But the Wraith now charging in. Cannons. A Forge attempting to get built. That's right, the Forge was at that mineral only third. So that's getting wiped out. Worker is getting massacred now. And the reinforcements moving bottom right for Kiko. Yeah, the chant. This is definitely one of those moments where you should think about. Yeah, that's probably GG. A couple clakes. Uh, a couple clakes. A couple wraiths, not cloaks because they are out of energy. There is a single cannon here. Ooh, looks like a counterattack for us at the 9 o'clock, able to disrupt that at the very least. But we've only got two mining bases. Kiko's got four mining bases to work with, and uh, another base to take. Probably at will. Wraith just gonna clip down that such a mosquito like sound too it looks like that dropship also getting active again finding top right gonna peel into those workers as well and i think bug at this stage has to weigh the options has one more army and unfortunately looks like it's running headlong into some mines as it's making its way across yeah gonna soften it up not sure a lot of those well we got a lot of dragoons out but still, it's not going to be enough to really take territory. Bug actually suddenly has a surge in, in, uh, in minerals. Which I'm a bit surprised by, given that he's been under Wraith Assault this entire time. It might just be kind of one of those, like, not dedicating any more APM to the situation to re-macro. So diving another attack force in, the Wraith swarming. Wiping out everything's left. There's GG from Bug. Kiko in... Flying, I will say, flying into the, f the final four. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.